Alrighty, well, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, October 1st. It's 5 o'clock p.m., and we are um, calling to order the Middlesex um, Select Board uh, meeting. So welcome to all the guests in our audience here and on Zoom. So thank you for coming. So um, we're going to approve the minutes of September 17th, regular meeting, um, and September 24th, 2024, emergency vicious dog hearing, action likely. Liz, can I also add, uh, yep. we need to um, add the September 3rd, they got cut, I just cut left off, but they're right there for the rewritten. Oh, because we hadn't signed those, right. And then the September 3rd um, minutes. So we'll do them individually, because I'm not sure everyone was here for all of that. I can't really remember. Um, so, if you were here for the September 3rd meeting minutes, which we adjusted a little bit to reflect um, the situation about the highway report on East Hill Road. Um, I, that's okay. Yeah, I also changed some things for, from Sarah about. Yep. Okay. All right. They're in there. Okay. So, so, I think the only person missing was, uh, was Peter. Okay. So I would make a motion to approve those minutes as okay. I've read them several times. Okay. I'll second that for you. All right. Is there further discussion? Randy's just quickly looking at them. All those in favor of September 3rd minutes, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, approving the September 17th regular meeting minutes. Is there a motion to move those minutes? Those are here. I'll move so we accept those minutes. Alrighty. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion about September 17th minutes? Okay, all those in favor of September 17th minutes say aye. 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 Okay, and then finally, the vicious dog hearing minutes of September 24th, Tuesday. That was last week. Um, it looks like we were all here, so that's good. Um, is there a motion to move those minutes or to approve those minutes? Well, that we uh, approve the dog hearing meeting of the 24th. 24th, yep. Then is there a second? I'll second. Okay. <coughs> is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we have to approve the um, agenda for today, October 1st, regular meeting. Are there any uh, amendments, Sarah? Um, yeah. I just amended the agenda to add the annual adoption of the 2019 Town Road and Bridge Standards. We've done that every year, and I don't know how we skipped over it this year. So but it's important for applying for grants. That okay. Really and then also, um, we're not going to do any action on George Fox at 183 Mile Bridge Road, I, but I just wanted to give some updates on possible future um, information that might come to the board. Um, okay, is there a motion to approve minutes? And the agenda. And the agenda, rather. I'm okay, ready, moves. All second. And Zara seconds. And all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all righty. So we've done that. It is now 5.05. We're right on schedule. Um, authorizing the select board chair to sign the contract with the subcontractor to implement the emergency watershed projects. Action likely. So we have Lincoln and Adrian here today. Um, so I will invite you, um, you know, to just speak up. You could come over here if you want. Um, if you can, yeah, it might be easier for you. Here's a, yeah, here's a chair. Oh, you could keep the chair. Okay. Uh, to take the chair's chair. Okay. Um, all right, folks, thanks for having me. Lincoln Frasca with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and helping the, the town along with my colleague Brian Voigt navigate the emergency watershed protection program process and we're, we are honing in on construction so we're excited about that and Hopefully, having having those projects completed this this field season or the end of it is is the goal here. Um, a little bit of change from what the agenda is here. I talked to Dexter 
this morning and really what's needed tonight is to just Dexter the engineer from New England construction consulting and um, agency so what we need tonight is a, an authorization to send a notice of award out to the subcontractor who is the only um, bid we received J Merrill construction um, and I copied that because I didn't send that ahead of time I copied that the notice of award it doesn't actually need a signature even it's just um, off, it would be it would need a signature by the subcontractor um, but essentially what this says is that we're accepting the town is accepting their bid of six hundred and sixty two thousand seven hundred and sixty six dollars um, to proceed with the, the emergency watershed projects this would then give the contractor 10 days to get the contract actually together with the engineer and then at the October 15th me meeting I could come back with that contract uh, for you all to review and potentially sign to um, then issue a notice to proceed with the contractor. Um, you should have Dexter's recommendation um, and um, in hand to 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 issue this notice of award. He did check on some previous projects of this construction subcontractor and, and seems like his bids um, documents which were also set out ahead of time were all in order um, so that's that's all pretty clear the you know the one sort of hitch here is that the bid came in uh, $244,759 over the allotted uh, $418,007 that were allocated for this program so the process got complicated with the federal fiscal year ending yesterday um, so the you know the Vermont pot of NRCS funds was whisked back to Washington and has to get transformed into FY 25 forms I don't know how they do that and then they send it back to Vermont and that's a that's a two to six week process so you know when I spoke with the NRCS they're they're hopeful that uh, this you know this request for reimbursement that Liz got together so quickly will be approved and the money will be available to do this construction work um, at the, the price that we uh, the only bid that we received but the timing is just close and if we if the contractor has the contract together and we're sitting here in a couple weeks and we haven't heard from the NRCS I think then it's just a conversation of how do we want to move forward with the funding that we do have that 418,000 um, and it might be to prioritize the projects with the engineer and the contractor to see, you know, what are the most urgent projects that we need to start on while not starting everything at once until we have that, the money in hand, because we don't want to get into a situation where we've started projects that we don't have the money to finish. Um, and uh, I think everyone could agree with that probably. So I'm here to answer any questions. I know I, that's kind of a lot, uh, but that is uh, where we're at, and it, I think it could go could go smoothly, but I'm here to, yeah, yes, take concerns. Uh, so that uh, difference of the 214,000 or whatever you said it was, yeah. um, how many projects on that listing uh, would that remove from that list if they were prioritized? Do we have a sense of that? I, I don't, that would have to be a question for the engineer and the subcontractor. Um, you know, I have the, and the bid documents include each site with the price breakdown. So there is a, there's a pretty big difference there with some of those Brook Road projects being quite a bit more than the, the rest of them. But I don't know what the prioritization is or how they would arrange that into, you know, which project they would start on um, if, if need be. Okay. So I guess what my concern is, is we may not know till after we've given a contract with Jason. Like, how can that be yeah. that we're going to promise him six hundred thousand, but we may not actually? Right. Get I think that. if we were in that boat, we would be forced to listen to that prioritization list and award up to that the amount that we have currently, with the projects that fall off that list being secondary and waiting the approval of the additional funding. Like it would have to be worked up. The notice to proceed would have to be worked up in a different manner right so it's contingent on you know these projects okay. until the funding for these projects come yeah. through based on the prioritization um, I mean the other thing is you just sit on the 
the contract until the money's here, and the only problem with that is that you know the, we're getting near the end of the calendar. So, um, but you are you know to totally in your right just to wait until to to not do that first option that we talked about. Yeah. You say you're getting towards the end of the calendar, and I was kind of thinking about that before. Yeah. But uh, this is mostly it's going to be in the uh, in the bro in the great bro. Yeah, there is there is a couple sites on on the Great Brook. Yeah. I, I, did you say that was one of your priority, like the one on? Uh, Those are some of the higher price court, projects. Right. right yeah. yeah. And these I mean, are again from September. From remember from twenty twenty three watershed, yeah. not twenty twenty four. Right. Yeah, but but the one in uh, like Phil Ijek and then, yeah yeah uh, yeah, but is. Uh, is weather limitations, uh, is it a crucial point whether, when it is? Uh, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, working in the, in, and putting stone fill to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, preserve the bank, mm -hmm. I mean, that can be done in, in, uh, in, in colder weather. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I think the prioritization comes in because I think some of the projects probably do require some earth movement, and you know they want to probably do that before the before it freezes up. Right. But originally, you know, if I think the recommendation to award letter says, you know, if approved on October fifteenth, the work would be completed by December fifteenth. So I think that was their ideal window. Now maybe there's some projects that they could do with the with the harder ground, you know, if, if if uh, it's a little bit of a mild December, but yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just curious, I'm a little behind. Can you name some of the projects that are going to be done under this? Like, what is this fixing? What is this taking care of? What yeah. Is, what is the point? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have the, in the bid documents, which is in my chair, I could, do you want like the addresses of the sites or no, just generally? No, 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 just generally, what is it, bank, what's the work? Yeah, a lot of it is bank stabilization. Okay. So, so you know, so a lot of houses are obviously on the river are at risk of being eroded away. So it's just armoring those banks um, there might be some debris removal and, you know, but it's, I think for the most part, it's, we're looking at riprap and just hardening the, the banks that are at risk of, you know, um, damaging a house in the next storm. Or wiping out road, road so yeah. it's, not, it's not passable. Yeah, I think with this program, we were looking at specific private property private versus, property. Okay. yeah, versus um, like a town road. It's imminent danger to a building. Like what we looked at, right, with the... Um... It's, it's the same program, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to get some clarification. And he's right, it's just stream bank protection and debris removal. Okay. The, there was one house that had a dam that maybe this program was going to fix, and they withdrew that request. Okay. So those are the only two things that this program is covering right now at these sites. Okay. And we're down to only six sites now. Yeah. Oh, you are? Which one should we lose? Um, Macy Road? Yeah, um, Patrick yeah. Wood on Macy Road didn't want to sign the landowner agreement and um, maintenance agreement. Right. Uh -huh. But he has then applied for this year's program too at a different spot on his property. Okay. So I think there's some other things going on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what Michael said in his email, um, LaPointe yeah. from the USDA. He's the state engineer that did yeah. all the initial work. He says the options, there are four options available for moving forward at this time. Number one is Middlesex covers any costs that exceed the obligated funds, which we can't do. Middlesex requires that property owners cover costs that exceeds the obligated funds. That we're not going to do because there's a lot of money here, right? Three, Middlesex holds off starting construction until an amendment can be fully executed in October or November. That's now. That's that's kind of what we're talking that's about. That's what we're hoping is just going to line up. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. You and know. then, four, Middlesex prioritizes projects and contractor starts on the highest priority project. If there are enough uh, FA funds remaining after the first project is completed, they move on to the next priority project. And he said, I'd recommend getting input from New England Engineering on prioritization. Yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah that, that, if that's the way, you know, you all want to play it, if we don't get that 
perfectly lined up and we're still waiting on the money, but we want to start the projects, then um, you know, I'll just go ahead after this meeting and ask Dexter um, to work on prioritizing the projects so that we can, they can bring to us a contract that has those priorities. And the key beyond the priority on the ground is that we're not spending over $418,000 until we have over $418,000. Okay. You know, yes. Please. Saying, so yeah. So that's the yeah. There's the economic. You know that that's the list right there. That's where it shows you. Yeah. To how much each site was estimated um, yeah. to cost. Right here. Did you did you get this? No. Was I don't it, have to. The Cincinnati insurance bid. We, we no. Maybe no. it's so big right. we can just pass it, it around. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So so and and you're saying that there's there's going to be some sort of. Um, Contingency in the contract that says subject to getting this money, we're going to bid it for six hundred thousand, right? Is that yeah, yeah, that's six sixty two or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. But so that, essentially, all all five of the if if this was in priority, which I don't know as if this is set up this way. Now. Yeah. Um, you know the. Five of the six would fall off because there's one project in here that basically three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars, and there's nothing else that you could do with the remaining funds. Right. If we so, just if we just yeah. have the money that we have yeah. today. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I would I would support option number four. Okay. Um, myself, as long as it doesn't interfere with the ability to get the additional monies by moving ahead with what we have today. That's um, yeah. And get the contractor moving. Mm -hmm. um, I I would support that option. I would agree with that, and I would also say, is it possible that because um, the hazard mitigation grants just opened up again for 2024, that we yep. can find some of the rest of this money by applying there, possibly, maybe. Uh, can, you, can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> sure. There, um, they were there were some hazard mitigation grants um, for the 2023 FEMA. So I guess that's if this is 2023, the deadline's passed. I, yeah. I know it reopened for 2024. Um, yeah, it's so a state. Like, it's a great hazard mitigation grant. Yes. So okay, since yeah, these are hazard mitigation, yeah, yeah. The, the slope stabilization. Oh, I see. Could you pick the, the other projects up with that money? Yeah. The so way he tried. describes it, some of these people had to have a redesign after the 2024 flood because it looked different than it did. Of course. Before, so they might then be able to fall into a 2024 category. Okay. Right. I mean, we can we can ask. Money. We might not get, but we can ask. Yeah. Just, yeah. My hope is that the money does come through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It makes it sound like there's just there's this lag. Like they, they, they do it and then they return. Right. right. And it's less yeah. of we just happen to fall on yeah, the of a wet year. Right. Yeah. Okay. It was unfortunate. Unfortunate <laughs> timing to, to yeah. a little bit of a curveball. But yeah, like Adrian said, yeah. the you know we are this program is again looking at the 2024 storm and there's 15 projects were assessed um, already for for damages this year. So we'll, you'll be you'll be seeing more of us, and we uh, we'll we'll have, we'll have learned a lot from the 2023 round. Uh, so hopefully it will be a little bit smoother, and we won't be in you know some of the deadline situations that we find ourselves in now. And Jason, I had called him because I was talking about another case okay, in Middlesex, and talked with him just the other day, and he described it as also that because I said, why is your bid so much higher than you know what was anticipated? And because you know he was the only bid, we didn't have anyone to compare him to. Right. Um, but um, but uh, he said part of it was um, that the 2024 flood further um, sort of um, created a larger um, coverage area. So like when they first looked at it and. FEMA looked at it and said, this is how much, or not FEMA, whoever it is, that looks at this and says, okay, this project is going to cost around this much. Am I saying this right? Yeah. And then the second flood came and instead it was this much because of further damage. And so to repair it, there needed to be more, um, more work done. Mm -hmm. um, so it came in, like had, both, had this been done after both storms, the, this um, amount that was, you know, um, estimated would have been higher 
And it'll be higher next year. If it it'll be higher. Again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There was definitely scope creep. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it, and what Michael Coyne from the NRCS said from the beginning was, you know, they do have extra money for construction implementation for these reasons. The engineering budget that we were allocated that is usually stands fixed, but from the beginning he made it sound like you know once you get that engineering estimate and the projects are you know you have a bid there's typically money for all these reasons you know okay so i would so make I think a motion yeah, that sure. we uh, go with option four on this right which is, which is according that to we, michael uh, we that would authorize we, the prioritization yeah and the spending up to the 400 and whatever that number was fourteen thousand. I would say in partnership with Jason because Jason may have some something to say about it and say, yep. oh, no, I can't do this one before I do that. Absolutely. One. Have Dexter and Jason get together, talk. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, we just give you the number again, uh, Lincoln, the 414. Yeah, 418,007 dollars. 418,007 dollars. Yeah, that's the that's, that's the obligated funds. Right. Yeah. What does FA stand for? Physical assistance. With an F? Financial. 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 <laughs> <laughs> PHA. Um, so, PHA. So, just saying that we just want to be clear. What we're doing is you are authorizing the project to go forward with the obligated funds from FEMA, right? From the Yeah, the NRCS. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that. Stop. While we oh. await the remaining. What is it? Two hundred and forty-four seven fifty-nine. Okay. Okay. So should we edit the notice of award then to reflect that? Because that's, you know, that I guess I'm assuming that's part of this motion is that we can send this notice of award out with that language. Of, yes. We're accepting this bid with the four hundred thousand number, you know, and then um, you know awaiting two hundred forty-four thousand dollars to complete yes. the. Quote of six hundred sixty-two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This, this, this motion is all over the place. Right. No, no. This is something that was that, not a motion. That was not. Well, a, this is the form that he's gonna uh, the bid award. Yeah. Letter. Right. All right. So I just need to know what the motion is. You're you're yes, accepting the, the bid, or you're authorizing the notice to proceed up to four hundred eighteen thousand yes. seven dollars. Yes. Notice to proceed. Notice, notice to proceed. proceed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. With um the. We're waiting with for the reallocation of the uh, what's what's the uh, or, what's the organization that the natural resource council natural resource service. council uh, coming forward with the extra two hundred and forty four four thousand seven hundred and fifty nine yeah. and authorizing Dexter and the contractor to prioritize the projects. Okay. Okay. There you go. Getting there. <laughs> I'll suck it. Oh, did he move it? I think Randy did. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Rand the move. Yeah. Okay, Randy moved and Zara seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hi, Peter. Hi. <laughs> okay, so it's Randy moved and Zara. I thought Zara moved. That is too, but they we changed don't remember. it. Randy explained it so much better than me. I'm going to put him first, please. You're not going to take you know credit for that. On. <laughs> They're going to be calling Randy and saying, yeah. what kind of motion was that? <laughs> it's OK. I can explain. <laughs> OK. Is there any further discussion? OK, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 OK, so are you going to um, edit that up and send it to me? Yeah, yeah, okay. I can do that. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And then I sign that? Um, so no, actually, oh, then you once. Okay, well, okay, so I'll, I was just going to edit it, send it to Dexter, and okay. then he was going to send it to Jason. Gotcha. Uh, Jason needs to sign it. Perfect. And then that starts the clock for him for to get the contract gotcha. and all the bid stuff together. So then I should be back here on the 15th with the contract um, that reflects this okay. notice of award. And when do we find out about the, um, the walkthrough that you did on the 16 properties and the eight that you might have approved? That I don't know. Okay. But I Allie's, look into that question. The, it was a different engineer that went through, and she has done six towns, and so she's working her way through all of them. So as soon as she can do that, I heard it was soon. I thought it was in mid October or something. I, I think you know. I'm hoping because that was yeah. was like September fifteenth or something that she did that. Yeah. Um, okay. So 
you know, people are chomping at the bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty. Well, thanks, Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Yeah. We have lost the agenda. Highway update. No. I found the agenda. Okay. It is 5.15. No, it's not. It's 5.25, and we are on to approving the warning of for the November 5th, 2024 special town meeting, i.e. town hall renovation bond vote. 25th? What do you mean by that, Sarah? Approving the warning for the November 5th special town meeting. Sorry, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just overworked. So I just, just here's the warning. You can just read it. You want me to come over and get it? You want me to grab it? You have it right there. Okay. You all have copies. I, I'm going to read it. it? Uh, sure. We have to read it out loud. Well, this is right. Approving the warning for the November 5th, 2024 special town meeting. That's what that is, actually. That's what your that's what the bond vote is. The bond vote is technically a special oh a special town meeting. meeting. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So the, should I read it out loud? Sure. Okay. The legal voters of the town of Middlesex are hereby warned and notified to meet in the Middlesex Town Hall, Five Church Street, in the town of Middlesex, on Tuesday, November fifth, twenty twenty four, between seven o'clock a.m. in the forenoon, at which time the polls will open, and seven o'clock p.m. in the afternoon, at which time the polls will close to vote by Australian ballot upon the following article of business. Shall general obligation bonds of the town of Middlesex in an amount not to exceed $2,500,000, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants in aid, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of renovating Middlesex Town Hall at an estimated cost of $3,250,000. The legal voters of Middlesex are further warned and notified that an informational hearing will be held in the Middlesex Town Hall, 5 Church Street, Middlesex, on Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. for the purpose of explaining the subject proposed renovations to Middlesex Town Hall and the financing thereof, per 17 BSA, Section 2680H. The legal voters of the Town of Middlesex are further notified that voter qualification, registration, and absentee voting relative to said special meeting shall be as provided in Chapter 9 of Title 16 and Chapters 43, 51, and 55 of Title 17, Vermont statutes annotated. The deadline for persons requesting absentee ballots is 5 o'clock p.m. Monday, November 4th, 2024. Voters may contact the town clerk's office with questions regarding voting. Adopted and approved at a meeting of the Middlesex Select Board duly noticed, called and held on October 1st, 2024. Received for record and recorded in the records of the town of Middlesex on October 2nd. That's the future, That's 2024. Tomorrow. Okay, so um, are you saying that we can also get absentee ballots even though they've been mailed to us? No. This is, you can, you can under the law, if somebody just moves to town uh -huh. from Ohio, they can come in and get an absentee ballot up until 5 p.m. But this was on the ballot in, right. that was mailed in, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. It was right there. I haven't looked at mine yet. Yeah. I, I did, I made a up. special point to look at that. Did, did you? It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So did this it. is just for uh, just for the special This is for the, well, no, this is, we have to warn, um, we have to warn this meeting. Like, it's not really a meeting. It's. Yeah. <laughs> we have to warn, that because it's a bond vote, it's considered a meeting, so it has to be warned. The meeting. It's not a meeting. So there's two things. There's a meeting on October 22nd. That's a hearing. That's uh, yeah, a hearing. There, there's yeah. a hearing. Okay. And that's further warned and notified. So we're warning what's called a town meeting, which is a bond vote on November 5th. Which is why we couldn't call, call the ex, an August right. 6th thing. A town yeah, we meeting. couldn't call that a town so meeting. So we're following the bond standard. <clears throat> yeah, bond so. bank is going to want to see that we do all of this, that no more than 30, no more than 40 days, no fewer than 30 days. That the, the town, the select, the legislative body, which is you, approve this warning, and then we have to go, then I have to post it five places around town, we have to have a public hearing within a certain time, and then we have to run it the same day of the week, three consecutive weeks in the Times Argus, the paper of record, this morning. So, pardon my ignorance, but what was 
So what was the point of putting it on the ballot already? You had to get it on the ballot in certain time? Limit? Right. The, yes. the, 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 can I, may I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The, um, the, the Secretary of State's office was printing all the ballots, so we needed the board, we needed to walk this fine line that just, what you did then was you approved the wording, wording of a ballot question by August 23rd, which was the cutoff for getting it on everybody, everybody's ballot. Otherwise, we could have done it separately, but we wouldn't have mailed them out, or we would have had to pay to mail them out if we wanted to do that, and people would have to come here to vote. So this was the way to get as many people as possible voting. I, yes. At one time, we're, I mean, we, we weren't even interested in doing this because we didn't have the money. Now we are? Um, we, we never uh, agreed to not do this. We agreed to We voted to put it on the... We, we voted for the voters yeah. to be able but to But then there was the discussion, well, what do we do... If we don't have the money. Right. Um, people well, will vote it down and blah, blah, blah. So if this gets... If this... So this remember the timing of this was a little weird. Um, mm -hmm. We had this... We had already approved it. And then the next day, literally, I found out that we couldn't Correct. apply for MERP. But did I tell you we applied for it? That they yes. changed their mind? Yeah, okay, so. We, do, we don't. Yeah. So then we applied for it, and we're waiting to hear, hopefully by the 21st, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't tell us by the 21st. But that first they said the 18th, then they said the 21st, That's which is why we put this as late as we possibly could, just in case we had the information. As long as we know by November 5th or 4th. Well, yeah. Well, the, but the even still, you anyway, don't know. Right? We don't even know, like, if we're gonna get, I mean, there's other grants we and we can't this so, which is why we asked for the 2.5 because you might have to borrow all of that. Um, so there is just so you know too. Also on um, this isn't what this oh is about. Stop. He stinks. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you. You said I could have him in here. I, I warned you. He doesn't yeah. feel well. Sorry, my dog has gastrointestinal <laughs> problem. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so anyway, um, that is what's happening. And so voters will now have a choice to vote for it or, or not, and, or what? vote against it. And um, if it passes and we don't get any extra funding, we would, um, we would probably go back to VIA and say we need to make it we need to do only the things that have to get them. Me. Well, what if we vote this the down? Bond is, if we vote it down, nothing gets done. Um, or And if we get some MERP money, we do maybe what we can with the MERP money. We're we voting to, to approve the, the warning. So I make a motion to approve yeah, this the is warning just about for the this. November yeah. 5th special town meeting, i.e. town hall reno renovation bond vote. That's my motion. Is there a second? second that. Okay, Peter seconds. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And are you opposed? I am. Okay, so Victor is opposed. Okay. Um, Did you guys sign it? Victor doesn't have to, but. Yeah. I don't have to sign it, right? Nope. Great. Save some ink. Um, okay, so I think we're done with that, right? Yep. Okay, so next thing on the agenda is. We're a little behind schedule. The highway update, reviewing post-flood road construction, considering a pay raise for road foreman, road commissioner, and let it be extra work. Um, action possible, considering a driveway culvert policy, action possible, and then some FEMA um, updates. So why don't you start with the highway update? Uh, East Hill is completed. Oh. The big culvert is done. They finished that up today. How did that go? Looked good. Okay. Um, zero incident? Zero from what I understand. Oh, well, yes. You're talking about in front of that house. Oh, you're thinking about something else. Okay. Yes, I was talking about the big, the big squash culvert down in the dip. Okay. Before At the well, bottom of the lease. No, I, up by uh, Bullbach Road. Oh, other way. Yeah. Okay. We, had, we had to close the road for two days. Okay. Oh. Uh, the other one is completed, and there was no incident. Say that again, the other uh, culvert on East Hill. On East Hill, there was no incident there. Okay. I told you about that. We did. Yeah. Um, my guys are up on uh, North Bear or East Bear Swamp at the top, uh, ditching, and we got some culverts to replace up there. 
Um, hopefully we'll be done that this week. And then we're going to move to South Bear Swamp on the Class 4 section to ditch that. Eric? Hi, Ben. Out there. Excuse me. Excuse me. You go ahead. I've gotten quite a few calls on the potholes uh, situation over on Shady Rill. That people with me. hot tires, people with bent rims. Is there any chance we can get some hot hot mix in those potholes before winter, I hope? Yes, that's we are working on that right now. But, but more than hot mix, you're getting you're gonna like redo it, right? Well we're gonna fix them properly. They're gonna be fixed properly <laughs> before winter. Good, thank you. I don't uh, on, on those those you know, I got a lot of calls on those and I went over and looked at them. I mean you gotta be blind to hit them. Mm -hmm. Do we have cones well, at night? People are, people are hitting them, Victor, like crazy. Yeah, they, they I might want to slow their them. eyes open when they drive down there. Yeah, they got to keep their yes. eyes open and slow down. Yes, Zara. We're all we're all hearing about the potholes. That's the that's the newest, latest, greatest craze in Middlesex. Um, Eric, somebody took it upon themselves to put uh, cones in there. Eric was gonna like paint around, you know, spray paint around them or whatever. Some wonderful citizen grabbed some cones and Monday put them up. So, so it's like, gonna be really hard to miss those holes now. <laughs> well, Temporary knocking solution. over some <laughs> cones. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's it. I, I ended up doing the uh, right away culvert list that was asked of me to do um, and I sent it out to you guys I don't know if you've got it or not but I saw that it came through yeah. Yeah. Is it the driveway ones correct yes the right away yeah oh, could you say I'm sorry uh, Eric just for clarification these are the culverts that have to be fixed otherwise they're gonna or that are in our right of way yes okay. yeah these are the ones that created issues with our roadways okay yep I'm sure I probably missed some but these are the ones that stood out to me the most okay and yes, Vic. These are um, most of these. The people can get in and out. Yes, they can get in and out, but it's gonna it, it would create right. a problem with All our right. road. Just want to make that clear. Yep. Huh? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Anything more about um, post flood road construction or other other duties? That so you're doing? the the uh, box culvert for Porter Road is completed, and hopefully we'll be going in. Towards the end of next week or the beginning of the week. Portal? Portal. Yep. You mean it's made? It is made and, and it's going to be delivered. Okay. Yep. It's ready right to go. Yep. Where is that on Portal? Right by Larkins. Yeah. I don't know names. I, you know, I don't remember the number of the house. So. It was where that seven foot culvert washed into the woods last year. Oh. Yeah. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Where they put a really nice house, Larkin's house. Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah. What took? Yes, Victor. Backing up. Sure. You've got 11. What is the board, uh, when's the board going to decide what we're going to do about the driveways? We're going to fix them or Well, that has to be like an agenda item, and there's a lot of changes, right? That's a road ordinance. Well, wasn't on, on the agenda? It is. Considering a driveway culvert policy. That's, that's what I mean, that's the research I did for you guys last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. All I know is I was asked to make a list, so I did. Right, because we yep. we posted, we pushed, we kicked the can down the road again. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm happy to speak on that if you'd like. On what? Uh, the culverts. Okay, oh, we yeah. haven't we have, we've okay. skipped over road foreman. Um, oh, yes. Extra Let's pay for road, for road foreman. <laughs> But is there anything more you want to add, Eric, about your... Um... I think that's it. Okay. Um, so the next thing is considering a pay raise for road foreman slash, excuse me, road commissioner in light of the extra FEMA work. Um, action possible. Um, so is that something you want to bring up, Zara? Sure. Um, I think Eric it. deserves a pay raise. I mean, we... Oh, um, as I <laughs> As I made the point last... Week. Uh, $1 an hour is $2,080 a year. When we lost Charles, we recovered 8,000. You know, that eight weeks of him being gone was 8,000 something. We absolutely have it in the budget. And, you know, as we're talking about who makes what and whatever, I'd love to see Eric be, you know, more on the same 
Paris, Cheryl, and, and Sarah. Okay. Equal partners. And had you looked at maybe some advertisements for Road Farm? I did, yeah. They're advertising um, between um, $35 and $45 an hour, depending on. And you have benefits and yep. things like that, and experience. Experience, okay. yeah. Um, okay. What's Eric making? Yeah, what is Eric? Less than, he's making $34 and mm, something change. Okay. Something. 40 Okay. Is, it, is there something you'd like to add? Oh, yes. oh, I would. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, I was going to play devil's advocate tonight. Mm -hmm. I, I want to hear it. Well, thank you for agreeing on that. Um, now, I just wonder what uh, what is the reason, one more time, for giving... I mean, it's kind of unusual to give uh, you know pay raises twice a year. Uh, I think there's some fallout. I had a discussion before this meeting with Eric. Uh, you know, it just doesn't stop here. It, you've got a crew over there saying, "Well, geez, we did all this work too. We want to, we want to increase too." Mm -hmm. uh, but Eric, the reason you're saying this is because of FEMA. FEMA work that he's doing? No, I'm saying that Eric is worth the Eric money. I think Eric is saying this. I think it's Zara. It it's all Zara. It's oh, me, yeah. and I'm saying that Eric works far more than 40 hours a week for us, and I understand that there's overtime. Mm -hmm. The way that you guys do your pay raises is this like, it's just a cost of living increase. That's not a raise, that's a cost of living increase. Well, what should and I'm a big believer, as somebody who came from a commission-based world where I was 100%, whatever I made, it was based on my work. Yep. Eric's putting in the hours, and he deserves more money. That's where I'm coming from. Okay, but what I'm saying is Eric, Eric's getting paid for those. He said he didn't have time. I believe last week or two weeks ago, he didn't have time to, to do, do what? everything. He would need extra time to do uh, FEMA work when we got, when Steve was let go and he was going to fill in for the uh, engineering stuff that you don't do for FEMA. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he does that, I mean, there's a part of his job, I mean, he's only got so much time, there's a part of a job that he's letting go. And that's his regular job of overseeing the crew. Mm. <laughs> so I agree with Skipper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I would just also I would I would argue that um, that the the duties of the road foreman have definitely um, been enhanced since the floods over the last few years and and just in general I think the duties of a road foreman have increased to include a lot more administrative stuff than in the past um, like even when Paul was was um, there weren't as many grants. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that he ends up having to do that take, you know, a higher skill set that he's learned. And um, so, you know, I, I agree that I would like to see him making what the average road foreman is making. And if we're not paying him what the average road foreman is making, we should be. Um, so that's my comment. And I think you're right with that savings is in there from not having Charles there for a few weeks or months for the rest of this year. And, and the other point that I made last time is, you know, Eric isn't just one thing to this town. The skills that he brings to us. We could have somebody who's great with the roads but can't speak to other human beings in a respectful way, you know? That's no good. Um, there's a lot of things that Eric brings to the table that we need. I think he's doing an excellent job managing the stress, managing all the extra calls from the floods that he's, you know, that takes away from his normal Skippy. work too. I know you want to get in my lap, but you can't. <laughs> Come on, Skippy. Um, I just think it's high time that we, I, I think it's important to let people who we value know that they're valued so that we keep them and they don't go to Callus that's, you know, offering a dollar more an hour and really close. <laughs> Dallas is only offering twenty five seventy five for performing. No, but for their starting. 
for a foreman? It's no, 35. for for. for it doesn't matter. That's right. that's a yeah. moot. That's a moot. So how much are they? Check? How much? How much is Dallas paying? Uh, it said thirty-five to forty-five, depending on experience and benefits. Or maybe it was thirty-five seventy-five. I don't remember at this point. Yes, Randy Drury, your comments. Um, first, I want to acknowledge that Eric does do a lot here. Right? He's he's valuable. Um, I do feel like personally. I would rather see a pay increase be handled at the uh, through the normal channels that we we operate within. That's not to say that I don't feel like recognition is is something that I don't support. Um, I think there's other ways of doing that. Um, uh, I mentioned in our last meeting, you know, if you want to recognize somebody for the going above and beyond, instead of making it a, a, a rate of pay change you can offer a one-time you know um, incentive bonus if you will for their performance and for me um, you know there is a recognition that you know they are getting paid already for this I Liz says that we should be paying what the average is we've done the work we've we've explored all of the uh, pay ranges out there and made a significant adjustment to everybody um, just within the last year um, and uh, for me I would much rather support going through if we need to reevaluate pays we do it as a as a uh, an effort to say are we falling behind again but we just did this a year ago I would I think we're falling behind I would be uh, I think we did it two years yeah, ago, Randy. Yeah. It okay. wasn't last year. It was two. It was like two or even three, and then it's been um, like we've given uh, generous uh, colas, like more than cola. Well, no, that's not true because I do agree that the colas are just keeping up, right? I agree with Zara's comment there. Um, I think for me, where I sit on this issue is I feel like. You know, uh, a, a straight pay adjustment should be evaluated as a whole, and I would much rather support a one-time um, incentive to to recognize going above and beyond. Um, I think that's that's okay. my opinion. That's where I sit. Thank you, Peter Hood. Uh, so I I do agree with Randy. Um, I hate when we do these interim pay adjustments and catch-ups and this and that. And uh, I think the time to consider it is when we do our budget at the end of the year and we look forward, we need to look at this again and, and not just for Eric, but for the whole road crew. On the other hand, um, certainly Eric has gone above and beyond. And the idea of whatever you call it, a bonus or whatever, to give him a pat on the back and thank him for his extra hard work, I think that's very appropriate. And then the only and then the only question is, just getting back to Victor's point, is do we do some kind of a bonus for the whole road crew? Obviously right. more for Eric, but uh, a little something for everybody. And I don't know the answer to that, but I like the I like the bonus idea better than the pay adjustment, and then pay attention to that when we get around to budget time which is almost right around the corner thank you peter sorry i hate the idea of a bonus thing we need to bring up our our pay for our people what would it cost this town if eric and the other crew members left would it cost oh you a dollar an hour would it cost you two thousand dollars a year i mean how much would it cost this town the, if the crew, if Eric's crew members are complaining, then they need to step it up. Like, obviously, Eric has been working hard, so if we give him a raise, then maybe Ricky will decide, you know, maybe I need to work some overtown, or maybe I need to do this. I, I don't understand who's complaining. And Eric's in charge of his crew, so he's going to need to take the hand over that. But... A dollar is $2,080 a year. Yes, Victor. I think, Zara, you don't get, it's a precedent you're setting. 
And it's How not a it? good precedent to give more than one pay raise a year. So, and I'm just speaking from my own experience of just working out in the world. Um, I have experienced pay increases in my salary in the middle of the year. Like if there's something not necessarily that, you know, um, I mean, I've experienced both. I've been like, okay, you know, you did a good job, here's some money, and it's a one-time payment, and it gets taxed, and it doesn't affect my hourly rate, um, but at the end of the year, you know, I've made X number of dollars, right? Um, and then I've also had mid-year adjustments to my actual hourly rate. Um, and I think it's not so much about precedent, it's to me it's more about um, does is this person taking on more responsibilities than um, than what we anticipated and therefore is their worth you know what is their what is their salary worth for that um, and things are going to happen mid-year right like a flood, right? That you have no control over. It's not. In, it's not a part of budget season. Um, and I think what Zara's point is is that the overall, you know, salary package is better for him to have a pay increase than it is to have a one-time bonus, because your next pay increase will be even that much greater. So if we don't do a pay increase and we're not on par with what other people are paying for that position, the next time he gets a pay increase, you know, we can maybe put him on par, maybe it'll be, but it, it, it's, he's that much left behind by not getting the pay raise, as opposed to a bonus. That's the difference, is that a bonus is just a bonus, but a pay raise improves everything. It improves your social security. It improves, you know, all kinds of things that are related to your salary. Yes, Peter. So I get, I get all of that, what you're saying, Liz. But all I'm suggesting is that when it comes around to pay adjustment time, Eric has taken on extra responsibility. He's performed. He should get an above average raise at that time. So really what we're talking about is I realize he doesn't get the extra social security and the, and the other stuff, but also a bonus received all at once has a little special reward to it. You get a, you get a lump sum of money, you can do something that maybe you wanted to do or plan to do or want, you know, who knows what with that, with that bonus. Whereas a dollar, a dollar is going to, disappear into the mix pretty quick. I mean, it's all well and good to say you give somebody a dollar raise, but you know, when you look at your pay at the end of the pay period, it doesn't make much of a difference. Yes, sir. The other reason Thank why, I, first of all, I think we need to stay competitive. So it's not just about Eric, it's about when Eric leaves us, what do we have to offer the next person and what kind of skill sets are we going to be needing and looking for there? The other thing with the bonus is, you know, Eric, Eric and Michelle can figure out their money and, and what their money is. I, personally, I, I've quit jobs after getting my bonus. Because why would I stay? Great. Thanks for the four grand. Here's my two weeks notice. That's with an actual pay increase, then we're ready for the future. We're thinking about the future. We're prepared. I feel like this body doesn't look into the future enough, possibly. Yes, Victor. Um, I don't want to labor this too much more, so I... Can you tell, ahead. yeah, where, where do you base your uh, 35 dollars $40? What towns? The, I, since I've been getting AOT, like every job listing, anytime there's a foreman, it's mm -hmm. It's thirty-five to forty-five dollars is the range. Can you be more specific, please? No, I can't. That, okay. Nope. And you know I can't because we've had this conversation about me being able to repeat like specific details of conversations. I never had that with you. Have I? <laughs> okay. So, um, is there anyone who's willing to make a motion? of some sort. I am. I, I'd love to make a motion to give Eric a raise. I don't know what that is amount is. 
but at least a dollar an hour. Okay. So is your motion that we give him a dollar an hour raise? Yes, okay. that's my motion. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Um, can you do two motions? You can only vote on one of them. Vote on one. Okay. So is there another motion? You could just no, walk I, this through. And then wait, say that again? We could walk this through and then, okay. Yeah, so all those in favor of giving Eric a $1 an hour raise right now, midterm, say aye. 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 Okay, Peter Yay, says aye. Peter. Okay, all the nays? Nay, two nays. Okay, the ayes have it. Thank and you. That was passed. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Alrighty. So when is the raise effective immediately? What do you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Effective? October first. Yeah, I would say. Okay. Is are we in the middle of a work week? A no, two week just, pay period or just started. the start? Okay. Well it started Saturday, but Okay. Um alrighty then. Um considering a driveway culvert policy action possible. Sarah, you wanna talk about this? Um okay. <clears throat> you guys were have been struggling for two years or over a year to deal with uh driveway culvert. So I researched what other towns do. And what other towns do is they have a driveway culvert policy. And Sarah, can you can you come over to closer to the microphone, please? Here she comes. Thank so, you. so in light of the, the, the struggles you guys have been having over dealing with this issue, I decided to talk, go research what other towns do about driveway culverts. And um, some towns, this is, this is a modeled after Bolton's uh, driveway culvert policy, which is pretty similar to what you have now, which is the homeowner, the property owner pays for the driveway culvert. It's installed under the supervision of the road foreman and the, uh, the homeowner is responsible for maintaining that culvert going forward. So uh, I figured this would be, since we didn't have a real policy, that this would be good to just break out. You guys can take it from there. I did talk to the Bolton Town Administrator about what, the, what their reaction was, since this, their, their policy passed in 2019, and since then there have been floods. And they're at the exact same spot where Middlesex is. There are plenty of people who have driveway culverts that have put them in and they're fine and they'll never be flooded. And then there are some problematic driveway culverts that could threaten town roads. So the way Bolton's gonna try to deal with this is uh, kind of put the issue to the voters by saying, if you think, if everybody is in agreement that we should all be paying for everybody's driveway culverts, then let's put it a line item in the budget for that'll be voted on in March and people can either vote it up or down. And that way you can get, because there are people whose driveways are fine who will not be paying for this, but you know, that's democracy. So this is what we have here. I highlighted the parts that are kind of uh, quote unquote controversial. And I don't expect you guys to pass this tonight, but I thought that it might get you talking and it would be a good idea to have a formal policy so you can give it to a, Eric and keep it in his truck, give it to somebody, that type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. so that's all I got to say. Um, so this is if we don't do a vote. This is if this is just starting with a base driveway. Culvert. A base driveway where where the where the owner of the um, right. driveway is responsible for his or her culvert. Right, and there are some things in there that only Eric can answer, like uh, new culvert installation shall have a concrete header on the uphill downhill ends. I don't know any of that stuff, but I just ripped it off a bolt. So. so how is how is this different from our policy now where this is talking about you know essentially I, I guess the only difference that I'm looking at is that we're willing to we'd be willing under this policy to go install culverts in the 13 uh, that were on the list to, to the standard that Eric has not for everybody but it's saying in here if the town is highway is damaged um, improper maintenance or anything like that 
we're kicking this back to the homeowner, which right. we all know isn't going to ever amount to anything. So this is that's why we need to change this. So Sarah just gave us this policy and highlighted the stuff that we are currently talking about changing. Um, the road committee voted unanimously that they believe that the town should take care of the right of way or should be in charge of the right of way so that the, that culverts can be upsized and that the holistic nature of the way of the waterways can be cleared out um, by our crew. Todd Eaton of the state, when Sarah was doing this research, also wrote back that many towns who used to have the homeowners are in charge of their own culverts, changing that policy because of the floods that have happened in their towns. But to be clear, we don't have a driveway culvert policy now. We just have what's written in the road ordinance, right? That right. few little sentences. Correct. We don't have so, an actual I, policy. Because it's such the, the, but I've seen that like a lot of towns have these policies. Yeah, and okay. They have these policies because of what you guys have been going back and forth. Unless you want to continue to talk about this at every meeting. No, 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 no. That's, yeah. that, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. But I thought with the road ordinance, I see you, Peter. I thought with the road ordinance that um, that requires like a whole... But this is just a policy. This is just a policy. You, 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 a policy is just fine. You can have a policy. FEMA wants. Okay. What? FEMA wise. And FEMA. FEMA and FEMA wise, yes. For when, when these disasters okay. having having this is they so would, this is this is also why this will help you sooner than rather than later. Gotcha. Because when I talked to Todd Eaton, just to go on the highway. Can you come over so sir, I'm sorry. Peter. When I talked to Todd Eaton um, about the highway ordinance, he said, you know, a lot of towns in fact, this is what reminded me of this. He said, they just adopt the town road and bridge standards, and that's it. You just use the V-Trans book for, for how you maintain roads, culvert size. You know, he, by the way, he always said it's a really good idea if you're going to go into a, somebody's right away to install a culvert for the first time to get written permission, that type of thing. But he said, that's really what applies to that, the, to roads. We don't have to have a highway ordinance. We do have to have a speeding ordinance because ours sucks, but we, we do have to redo that. But you, a culvert policy allows the town to make a decision about these right-of-way culverts. Not up the driveway, just in the freeway. Mm -hmm. And then when FEMA comes to town and right. we have a policy that says we take care of those right-of-way, then we can charge FEMA. For right. That. But as long oh, as sorry, we Peter has a question. He's been raising his hand. Go ahead, Peter. So... I would say we've been discussing this business of driveway culverts in the right of way for 30 years. <laughs> and randomly over that period of time, we've repl replaced some culverts. We've refused to replace other culverts. We've been inconsistent. And especially in light of climate change in the last two years, floods in our experience, I think it's time that we stepped up and said, you know what? we're gonna be responsible for what's in the right of way. And I realize some people have culverts in their driveways and some people don't, but it was my neighbor's culvert across the road that was plugged up and he didn't repair it. And it caused my whole driveway to wash out. So if the town had been ma maintaining that culvert, my driveway wouldn't have washed out. And I think there are other people that are in that same boat. So I don't know how we do it, whether we, do it as part of part of this repair. I don't know when we implement it, but I think it's long past time that we said we're responsible for the right of way. We'll judge the size of the culverts. We'll install them. We'll maintain them. We'll keep them from getting plugged up and all that and all that kind of stuff. So, so here, here. Right. I just want to say, Peter, did you hear that Zara said that this is really important for FEMA? FEMA, I would, I've been listening in on these conversations, and FEMA just wants everything in a policy. They want minutes, they want policy, and they can send that to Washington, and that makes every job easier. So, yeah. But can I just get clarity? I don't. I still don't understand. Um, even if we said, yeah, this is great, let's just approve this. Tonight. No, no, no. Don't That's approve not the plan. No. Don't, don't approve right. this. So what I'm, this is just a talking point for you, since you don't have a separate COVID okay. policy. I can also find other towns. I mean, they go from all over the place, but you know. But 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 my but my question is, do are we going to ask the townspeople to vote on this? Like, not the policy, no. but on the the piece whether oh. around the property owner shall be responsible. No. So what what was this well, put it in the budget? Business? Because the bold to handle the blowback of all of this was saying. What they're going to do is put a line item for driveway culvert repairs in the upcoming budget. And that way, when you get to town meeting, you can people can either object or not object. And if they pass it, 
know, somebody objects, says, I don't understand why this new guy up the, who's building up the road is getting a culvert put in by the town and maintained by the, you know, or put in by the town. My culvert wasn't put in by the town. I had to pay for that. You say, well, look, we passed this policy in October of 2024, and the voters supported it by approving the, uh, the budget item for the highway department that clearly said highway, um, right-of-way culverts, uh, it had, had money for right-of-way culverts. So that's kind of a way to... So to all culverts that are in the right-of-way would fall into this potentially? After yes. the first one is installed. After the first one is well, installed. That, sorry. Go ahead. That, that's my point. I, I would still have the homeowner install their first one up to standard. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yes. what you guys need to discuss. Right. But, okay. You know, and then, and then moving forward after we take ownership of it if you want so in other words so that's one thing you would consider in the policy that the homeowners are responsible and they pay for installing the culverts after the this with under the foreman supervision mm -hmm. for a new home build for, for a new home build yeah. in the yeah. driveway but to replace you have you guys have to answer do we do we replace mm -hmm. do we pay for replacements do we pay for maintenance mm -hmm. do you have the does do you have the road crew to handle maintenance of all these culverts i mean these are right. questions that the board needs to discuss mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think that what we should do as a board is take this home, review it ourselves, um, maybe do some others, think way. about some edits that we might want to make, um, and then put it on for a future um, agenda item. By the way, I have about five towns downloaded culverts, so I can send those to you okay. so you guys can compare them. Sure. Great. But does that sound good to everybody? Yep. Okay. Okay. So then the next thing on the on the same uh, line item for five twenty at six ten is um, FEMA appointed a new town FEMA coordinator for the twenty twenty four FEMA projects and closing out twenty twenty three FEMA projects and compensation for new FEMA coordinator action likely. Okay. So um, this is around um, appointing a new FEMA coordinator for twenty twenty four. Um, and um, the compensation for this coordinator and can we just back up to say oh oh and closing out 2023 so the person would be doing both 2024 FEMA projects and closing out 2023 so is there um, discussion about this I think we are eyeing towards Zara to do this because she's been working on this for 2023 and um, seems like the most logical person. Um, is there any discussion about that? And we've been given the okay by FEMA to sole source this, so to speak. So oh, may I speak? Yep, go right ahead, Sarah. So Andy asked me to get something in writing from FEMA or Vermont Emergency Management and the answer was no, they weren't going to do that. Can't lead a bureaucrat to a policy, but you can't make them sign it. But verbally, the I'm talking to Kim Kenarici about this. What? I think Peter can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Peter, we're talking about, we're talking about uh, whether or not it's okay for the board to appoint Zara. And uh, Randy had asked at the last meeting to get it in, to get what Kim Kenarici, who's the head of Vermont Emergency Management, to get it right that it was okay to appoint her without going through a three phone call process, bid process, et cetera, because Zara had been working, it made, it made sense, we're gonna put this in the minutes, that Zara had been working as a volunteer on these projects since March and has been at every single, July, July has been every single meeting since then, you know, and has come, done a lot of work. So it makes sense for her to, to do that. But no one's going to put, Dirk said, no one's gonna put that in writing and Kim's not gonna put that in writing either. That, it, yes, that's okay, but it's a logical. Wasn't there a conversation around the fact that because I'm a town employee, technically anyway, from being on the select board, that it was not a problem? I think there was something like that as well. It was, it was not, it was that, the point is you're not coming out of the blue, you're not somebody's relative, you're not da da da, we're not, you, there's a logic, FEMA will understand this. You, doesn't Dirk take attendance? Yes. Yes. Yep. So. Okay, so that was the CYA portion of that. Alrighty, any other questions? Okay. Uh, a paid position or a volunteer position? Okay. 
It's not a volunteer position. Um, so the pay we haven't talked about, have we? No. Just what? may I remind you that this is also what Kim said. The pay has got to be within the range of what a normal office person would be paid. Lister, zoning administrator. Okay, and what are touch. those? Cheryl? What's the range, do you think? Between 27 and 34. Okay. The payroll's in there. Yeah. Okay, 27 to 34. Okay. So to answer your question, Peter, yes, it is a volunteer position. <laughs> Currently. Based, based Currently. on my pay rate. <laughs> I, get it, I get it, Sarah. Believe me, I get it. I didn't mean that as a disparaging remark against you. I appreciate all no, 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 no. It's a, no, 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 I didn't take it that way. I actually have been volunteering. She has been volunteering. And one more thing. If, can I just say one more thing, Liz? Yeah. Because this is category Z in the female world, this will be the last thing compensated to the town. But the good news about Z is that if it is in that range, in that range, you get it all. It's 100%. Perfect. Randy. Okay. If you look at Sarah and then look at Sam, you'll have the range. Yeah, it's 2778 on the low end. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, I'm just, I, I need to speak up here. I'm yeah. really sorry. I'm going to have to be on the high end. This is going to take me till October. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get it done before the election so that uh, we're not screwed up with any sort of uh, changes in administration. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I heard that conversation. 3634 is the high. Okay. And so if it falls between those? Yeah, I mean, okay. there's, 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 so I would move that, or is there a motion? 36.34 is the high. I would make the motion that we pay 36.34. You have to make the motion to hire her too. And to hire Zara Vincent as the female coordinator. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Peter seconds it. All right. 36.34? Yeah, whatever the high, whatever that was. Pretty sure 36.34, I think is what I just saw. Okay. Thirty-six, thirty-four. Yeah, thirty-six, thirty-four. Um, any further discussion? Yes. Victor. Victor. So we're being we're going to pay the new FEMA coordinator thirty-six. Six thirty-four. Yep. Yeah, instead of seventy-five dollars. We're going to pay the person that's actually doing the field engineering work thirty-five. Well, he also has a he also has a full time job. This is part time, and so it's. But still, um, that FEMA. She work. doesn't get benefits. But he's still, he's still getting paid thirty five bucks an hour, or somewhere yeah. in there, which it's great. I'm big. Yeah. Congratulations. It's just a different but, job. But so, what's the difference between that and hiring somebody for seventy bucks an hour and doing it all all the time, doing both? Um, I don't know what you mean. Well, having one person do it all, because for because one, he didn't do it all. Well, I'm not talking about rehiring the one we had. I know, but he didn't do it all. He's needed. Right, but what's the difference? We're paying 70 bucks now. I think Randy had an idea at one time to hire somebody that does it all. Did you know? They not? would still need to be working with Eric. He means doing it all. Like, nobody talks to Eric. Nobody, like, Eric's still going to have to be a part of this. Eric would still be involved. Eric would still be yes. involved, but not to the extent that. Not to the same extent. Yes, it's our I am. I am super happy for you guys to find somebody at seventy dollars an hour and stop doing these spreadsheets for you if you wish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I. I, I this don't is a different it. job. This is temporary. <laughs> it is not full time. She does not get benefits. There's no. There's not. There's. There's. You know, the only thing that she gets is uh, FICA and um, uh, Medicare. FICA. Not Medicare. Right. I mean. You, I have Medicaid. Yeah, I mean, I mean to say <laughs> that we're paying. You're not paying self-employment taxes. This isn't. You're going to get a W two. So we're paying for your self-employment. I'm going to bust a move for a month and yeah. get these things done so that this town gets paid back. Yeah. So. Plus, plus FEMA's going to pay for it, right? FEMA's going to pay for it. Ah, yes. So what's the big deal? Right. I so all those in favor, say aye. <laughs> aye. Aye. You can vote, Zara. Aye. Okay. Um, the ayes have it. She shouldn't recuse. Yeah, maybe, maybe she should recuse. I'll recuse myself. Okay, yes, yeah, she should. 
<laughs> all right. So, so congratulations, well, Zara. Vote? I didn't hear the vote. Who voted? Uh, we all voted aye, except for Zara, who recused herself. Okay. For 3634. Um, and hired her as the FEMA um, projects coordinator. Um, so we set a, a time frame for the other position. Was that a necessary action? Um, and should we be doing that here? Yeah, yes. I don't know. I mean, yeah, this so could this is going to go on into next summer, isn't it? It is. Right. So. But but yes and no. Like I want to complete 2023 and be work of 2024 before the end of this year. Hopefully before the change. In the it's not like it's going to be 36. She's not and then, be working every week all week long. I mean, you can always talk about it if you can find somebody else to fill in those spreadsheets. Again, I, I'm not about data entry. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's not what I'm getting at. I just. So my comments and and questions revolve around making sure we're checking boxes and making yeah. sure that we're eligible to be paid back. Oh, okay. So the RFP question and, and any of that, I don't want you to misconstrue and take that as a, hey, I don't want Zara doing this type of thing. Definitely not. It's no. trying to be protective of the town and, and yeah, making sure you. that we're doing what we need to be doing to be eligible to be paid back. I appreciate yeah. that. And thank you for that, Randy. And Sarah, yes. Actually, the question that people are going to want to know is when does that pay start? Um, well, it, it can't be retroactive, so it has to start today. Yeah, October 1st. Okay. Yeah. Start today. It's in the minutes, they'll have that discussion. I think we'll be covered. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, annual adoption of the 20. Well, actually, what I what wasn't on here, Sarah, was was there an opportunity to um, give any kind of like bonus to Zara for the work that she's been doing for the last six months? That's up to the town's discretion. It just can't come from FEMA funding. It will. You, FEMA will not reimburse. It. FEMA won't reimburse Absolutely it. Absolutely not. Okay. That, that, that I got clear. They, that you got clear. I did give you a, a timesheet. It was it's only sixty something hours that I put in since July. Sixty yeah, you hours. You always try. Right. So. Um, yeah. So if we were to do compensate her for her time, it's about twenty three hundred dollars at the thirty six dollars an hour that we would have to come out of discretionary like our funds or Charles's salary. Exactly. Just, just a couple more thousand we could get rid of. Then you're gonna, you're, the town's going to eat that cost. Jeez. The town will eat that cost, yeah. The town will eat that cost. Yeah. So um, is there anyone who uh, wants to discuss that? Is there, um, I mean, I would make a motion that we um, consider a um, $2,300 bonus for Zara for the work that she has done to support us in our FEMA paperwork. Let's support that. Okay, Randy supports it. So I made a motion. Did you second that? Sure. Randy seconded it. This would come out of our discretionary money. Um, all those, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of said bonus for Zara, say aye. Yay, Zara. Zara, you're gonna, you recuse yourself. I'll recuse myself, okay. yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank All you. right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so then we are on to the annual adoption of the 2019 Town Road and Bridge Standards. Action likely. Okay, what's that, Sarah? What? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, the annual adoption it? of the 2019 so, Town Roads and Bridge Standards. You, you do it. You do it every year, and it's really just. But why is it 2019 that we're? Because going? that was the last time the standards were passed. Oh, that, that was okay. one of the reasons why I held off. Now I remember I wasn't completely sleeping on the job. I held off because the, those standards were supposed okay, to be yeah. done. They were supposed to be done every five years. So I thought, oh, we'll have 2024 Road and Bridge Standards. But then, according to our friends at the Central Mont Regional Planning Commission, no, we're still on the 2019 standards. So now, okay, so we're exceeding <laughs> standards, probably. Sure. With the flood? Oh, absolutely, Eric. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're getting a dollar an hour or more. Come on, snap up. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is how it's going to go, buddy. <laughs> okay. And it's not a big. Do deal. we all sign this? No, all sign it. Slots. Slots. What? There's lots of slots oh, for signing. It just says duly authorized administrator. We could vote to have one person. Randy. 
<laughs> you, can, you can sign it. Um, Eric, I, I think I answered it right. That's what I, I, those are the boxes I clicked last time. Did yep. you, you do? They do meet and exceed the minimum requirements yep. included in the June 5th, 2019. But when will these get re... Um, well, they're supposed to be done every five years. But so just, that would be this year. Well, I, that's... But they're not going to do it. Oh, the state does it. Yes, state does. We further certified that we do have an up-to-date highway network inventory, which identifies location, size, deficiency, conditions of roads, bridges, causeways, culverts, and highway-related retaining walls on class one, two, and three town highways, and estimated cost of repair. Okay. Already, is there a motion? Make that motion. Thank you, Victor. Is there a second that we approve this? Randy seconds it. All those in favor of signing this certificate? Aye. of compliance for the town roads and bridges standards. Aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Everybody, yep. put your fancy signatures on here. Ten. Zara, you have something new to give to Dirk. <laughs> okay, there we go. Woo. Okay, next. Okay, so this, I'll just quickly um, update this to you, which is Sorry. considering sponsoring the elevation project for George Fox of 183 miles. Yes, yeah, you can, can I just interrupt you for one quick second? Yeah. So uh, Eric, Zara, and I all got an email from uh, John Ray Hill the other day uh, talking about the activity that his team, Future, has been doing with regard to the roads. And Zara, you might want to say something about this too. His, his concern has been that we need to, I guess I would call them, if we can have a few experimental changes to the way we grade our roads to see if that will improve not only the mud season but the flood performance with regard to uh, with regard to uh, of, you know getting water off the road and into the ditches. And his proposal was or is that we identify a few areas and make a few whether they're whether they're cutouts to the ditch or whatever they are to try and improve getting the water off the water off the road and i don't know zara if your committee is supporting this or not supporting it it sounds like a good idea i just don't know if we have the time to do it that you 100 percent exactly right peter to all of that um yeah so team future is part of the road committee um, I let them do a takeover last week. Um, I, I love John Rayhill. He is, he talks about grounds in every meeting. Um, so I know that this is near and dear to his heart. I have let him know that it's very possible that we don't have time this season, unfortunately. And that's why I encouraged him to put everything in writing versus having a meeting with Eric about it. Because I know he didn't have time for that. Um, so we're looking at a lot of things in, in the road committee. Um, that's one of the things for Team Future. Um, Dexter's focusing on um, an asset management plan. So there's, there's a lot of things going on. I do think it's a good idea. I know Eric has gotten the thing, so he will, he'll, he'll take it into consideration. But I, I know he's got a lot more kind of important things on his plate to get us to winter so, so that our roads are, are plowable. And he knows about crowns. I mean, it's, it's kind of John's pet project. So we're listening to him, and um, we agree that it's a good thing. But it's, it's, not, it's not in the urgent and important category. Let's put it that way, OK? OK, Vic. My take on that going to the Zara's uh, subcommittee meeting yep. was that he wanted to do that out beyond on the flats, out towards where the turnaround is. It's not on the steep part of uh, uh, Wood Road. And which, will, which is going to take building up of gravel because there's not enough there. Quagmire might be a yeah. good yeah. So I, I know what he wants. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to it this fall, um, but we will continue to listen to John and um, Team Futures' suggestions for improvements on our roads. Um, and, and Peter, if you want, um, all of our minutes and everything are on what's next Middlesex. So if you want to take Oh, no, I've been, I've been looking at them. I just, okay. you know, what, what's frustrating to me, guys, is that we have problems in the same areas over and over and over again. And to me, some of those areas, whether it's, whether it's crowning or creating a pathway for the water to get through the, 
through the berm so that when we grade, the water gets into the ditch. I mean, that's part of that's part of regular maintenance. I don't think it's necessarily going out and doing a special project, but I understand this is the year, this may not be the year we can do any of that stuff. And I, Zara, I want to acknowledge that I forgot about the thing around the survey for the town people. Um, and I think I want to have a, a more in-depth conversation with you about how it sort of overlaps with emergency management. Yes. And all of the things that I learned in the emergency management that are sort of cover some of those those issues. Yep. Um, I, I don't think there's any harm in this survey, but I, you know, it's just whether or not it then becomes redundant because we may be reaching out again. We're going to hold until yeah. we talk. To okay. You. And I'm sorry that I, I never followed up about that. Um, okay. So just quickly about George Fox. So, um, and this is for you, Zara, to sort of think about um, as a part of the hazard mitigation. You know how you said, oh, there's, you know, there's the hazard mitigation um, grants. grants that are opening up um, again. So remember how Zara had by August 30th that whole list of um, hazards that we, that we submitted. Um, and um, there was something like $367 million in requests from the state, but they only have like forget I want to say it's like 90 million at most so some of these projects are just not going to get funded through that but they have other um, grants that are available um, but one of the things that could be done in that is is an elevation request for someone who's in a floodplain and so George Fox um, missed that deadline but he is um, he's working um, uh, with some folks um, who um, uh, where, where he's now thinking he does want to elevate um, his his mobile home but there's a lot of sort of conditions around this um, and if he were to apply for this hazard to sort of the next round of, of applications it does require at this point um, according to Brian Voigt he believes there is the 25% match and I've already told the people who are working with them, the town's not gonna cover the 25% match. Like that's not gonna happen. Um, but we may have some funding in our own resources that can help with that 25% match or are seeking some other funding. So we may not even apply for this elevation, um, this particular um, hazard mitigation elevation. Um, we were thinking we were going to when we put this on the agenda, but we got some more information and we're going to hold off on that. But if in the event we do, it would be with the understanding that Middlesex was not going to cover the 25% and that it would be covered by a different program. Yeah. Who's we in this conversation? Um, so the Capstone D uh, Disaster Case Management Program. For FEMA, it's a FEMA um, case management program that's working with them. So anyway, we've been talking with Kevin Thompson about it because it's regardless whatever he does requires um, DRB approval. He did get approval for his um, his apart his uh, his garage to become an apartment, but now he doesn't want to do that. So we're just trying to figure this out. So that's where this came up. There's no action tonight. End of story. Okay, 6.15, almost on time. <laughs> Considering the Middlesex Conservation Commission's recommendation that Ronald Dalton be appointed to the MCC action likely. You guys, there's a little letter here um, from Mr. Dalton. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, does anyone have a copy of it? Okay, thanks, I saw it in my paperwork, but I lost it. Okay, it says, Dear Middlesex Conservation Commission, I am writing to express my interest in joining the team. I have enjoyed learning about all that our town has to offer through the well-assembled and documented resources and would like to contribute to the growing and ongoing support of the organization. I'm eager to learn and grow with the community as we all shape the future with a changing climate. I come from a design and engineering background and can apply my skill toward helping plan, solve, and pitch in with a helping hand. I am also here to connect with the other members and build community while learning more about Middlesex and hopefully making a positive impact on our town. Best regards, Owen Dalton, Church Street. Oh, he lives right next door. Over there. Um, yep. Uh, Alrighty. Well, is he here to say anything? 
doesn't look like it, but that's but the, okay. Uh, the Conservation Commission has passed on this. They, they recommend it. They recommend it. Okay, so we need to make a motion. I'll make a motion okay. to okay. accept Ronald Dalton to the Middlesex Conservation Bowen Commission. Dalton. Yep. Oh, and Robert. is there a second? Oh. Owen, sorry. Yeah, and oh. Vic seconds it, and all those in favor of Owen Dalton say aye. Aye. Congratulations, aye. Mr. Dalton of Church have, Street, Middlesex. I, I have a conflict <laughs> of interest. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, so Vic has a conflict of interest, so there's, did you say aye, Peter? Yes. Okay, so there four is. ayes and one abstention. Okay, now we are on to Gassy Dog. Sorry, dog. Sorry, sorry, Randy. I didn't mean to, Randy. I can't help it. I've got a bad stomach. Mm. Okay. It was Sarah who told me he it's has bad. bad. It's bad. It's really bad. It's bad. He can't help it. Hey, Liz. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm bagging out of this meeting. Right oh yeah, you got to go. Sarah's got to run. All right. So. Don't forget to make a motion to go into executive session. Okay. It's more answer. important that you make a motion to go into. The okay. If so you decide to then. Okay, do we want to go into executive session to discuss um, the resignation of Patty O'Neill? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Why? Because it may require some executive session discussion under VSA Statute 313A1B. <clears throat> Any action will be taken outside of executive session in this meeting. Is there a motion? Sure, I'll move. Okay, is there a second? Yes. Okay, Peter yes. seconds. All those in favor of moving into executive session, say aye. 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 Okay, you have to, okay so. Okay. Can you pause moved. recording? Who, Peter, who seconded? Peter moved I it. Peter Hood. Or Peter, Peter seconded okay. it. And you're and going to executive session six. Any days? And what's, can, can somebody tell me what the executive session falls under? Like why, if this yes. isn't. Yes, that would be my question. It's, uh, can, right. can you repeat that statute, Sarah, yeah, what it is? Uh, well, if you, you can also disagree, but the only applicable uh, would, uh, part of the statute would be labor re relations agreements with uh, employees. That was the best I could find. If there's anything mm -hmm. else, you guys should not go into an executive session. It's contract, you can go into executive session. Did you read the letter, people? So you guys need to decide whether or not to go. Those are executive session, but that's those are that's the best it could find. It's not it's not pending or probable civil litigation, I don't think, right? No. Okay. So uh, grievances other than tax grievances, that's a pretty broad uh, line. I'm I'm leery of it. Arbitration or mediation, no labor relations agreements with con with employees, maybe that's the best contracts. I don't think so. We don't have a contract with her. And it's not confidential or trans client uh, communication. So. If you guys disagree, if you say no, I, I don't want to do it, you don't have to go into executive session. Yes, Victor. Aren't we just, at the bottom line, are we just accepting or her? I think he wanted to explain. Also, just with the other topics. Who wanted to explain? Evaluation of a public Jeff. officer employee. So that's, that's that. No right. point if we accept a resignation. If you're happy with it, then we don't need to discuss. I am. Okay. Can we make another motion that we uh, pass over executive session and accept the resignation? Uh, we just don't vote to go into executive session. Right. right. Yeah, let's not, fine yeah, let's not vote to go into executive session Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Vic. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Mr. Highway. Thank you, Sarah. 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 Thank you,
her dog. <laughs> no, that's yours. That's your delay. Yeah. Bye -bye. Night. Oh, I can smell that dog all the way down here. <laughs> I told you guys he was going to sit in the car where it said, I will be, my owner will be back. Okay, yeah, I would I would um, accept her letter of resignation and um, and thank her for her longtime sure. service to Middlesex's fire department. Right. I agree. And is did someone make that motion already? I'll make a motion that we accept okay. Patty Lewis's resignation. Patty O'Neill. Patty O'Neill. Patty O'Neill. Okay. I remember Patty. You want, to give, you want the rest too? Yep. Thank, and thank her for her uh, years of service to the uh, Middlesex yes. Volunteer Fire Department. Yes. Thank you so much, Patty. Is there a second? Second. That okay. Lady. All those in favor of accepting Patty's resignation, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Patty, for your many years of service. No, Patty, was okay. Nope. Next. Any other matters that come before the board? Are there any other matters? Wow, we are joining early. I just want everyone to know that. Can I ask Eric a question? Uh, you may. Just wondering, is Dirt Tech going to do McCullough Hill or the town forces? When you that say is, do. <laughs> What's that? That is going out to bid. Whether we do it or someone else. Right. You mean as far as fill, taking the stuff back out of the ditch and fixing that? I don't know if we are personally going to have enough time. To What's do that? that? I don't know if we personally will have enough time to do that. But Dirt Tech, that wouldn't be a point. Well, they don't have time either? I'm not sure yet. No. We're, we're don't working on the words in your mouth. Yeah, no. FEMA has to RFQ everything. Yeah, we're yeah. working on that time frame right now. And which part of McCullough Hill are you talking about, Nick? Well, it's by my house, of course. No, <laughs> by my house and down around the yes. corner. It has to be done before winter. I'm not sure down, exactly. Down in the dip, there's a big culvert, yep. and it all washed yep. out, went over. Yep, yep. And they went and just put some uh, 301 35 stone in there, yep. and it wasn't good enough, so the road's kind of falling yep. down. It's sloughing off, and it needs to be armored. And then they yeah, came the up. Thing needs to be armored. Armored. And then they came up through with the dozer, and they fell in the ditch. So if we get any rain to the magnitude that we did in July 11th, well, it's just going to wash out again. Yeah. Tech. Yeah. And it's rougher than hell. Yes, it is. Derek tried to fix it, but don't want a lot of fix. Here's my data entry the right there. First one for the first one for but there's a little bit of a discrepancy that I need to okay. figure out. So to answer your but question. I've also got to pull down that 1.5 in order to We are trying to get it done before winter. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure exactly at this moment who will be doing it. So you're going to go out the bids, you said, maybe? maybe? We might have to, because I don't think Dirt Tech's going to have time, okay. but I'm working on that with them right now. So oh, it's not a conflict if you give it to somebody else? Well, they did some of the work already, so. Do you, do you need us to okay. come in another time? It's basically a safety issue order, at this point. Like, have people come but in? What? Yeah, it's basically a safety issue at this I point. Because I'm going to take it more for a train. My one trip out a week didn't bother Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but you do it at 60 miles an hour. Me? <laughs> <laughs> point, point six. <laughs> oh, oh. Numbers were back. He's, he's not He's not that guy. He's not the, the 60 mile an hour guy. There are some. Oh, there are some. There are some. Absolutely. Some of them, I don't know how they stop before the guardrails at the bottom of the hill. Mm. That is a good question. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That's what the guardrails are. You mean at the bottom where Brooke all the pen? pen? I am. Thank you. You're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. I'm just going to put I, it away. I, I, I don't stop. But yeah, I just, he's like, you're going to get one day. I'm like, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Because if I have to write it. Okay. I think I do, right? Uh, so the sign out there says McCullough Hill. That's, mm -hmm. that's Old Brook all the way from Center Road. 
Got you. So yes, the main the main roadway there and the travel path is right. Old Brook. Okay, thank you. So McCullough Hill coming thank down you, has to stop. Do that they? No, they never stop. But what? but legally but legally that is Old Brook Road and gotcha. they have the right of way. Is that because it's on oh. the map? Old Brook Road has the right. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, it says I think Michelle just wanted that. On there, and that won't work <laughs> because that's what everybody's looking for when they're coming through. So at one point, my understanding after talking with, I think it was David at one point, is somebody had asked to put McCullough Hill out there so people could eat more easily find it. Gotcha. Um, but that roadway, my understanding is yeah. that it's actually Old Brook all the way from center in. Because that used to be the old road. Yes. That went down around in... The Before the interstate there. was there, right? right it always exactly. used to come come yeah. down through. Yeah, that's crazy. And even way back when, at one point, my driveway was part of the old old driveway. Really? Yes. Okay, I think we should Oops. adjourn the meeting. That's okay. Is there any other matters that come before the board? Alrighty, we are adjourning the meeting early, and thank.